my name is Tiffany and welcome or welcome back to my channel. I have another Upcycle by Little Toe for you today where I take old forgotten items and give them a new life. So if you like sewing and upcycling content, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how I turned this dated dress into this two-piece set. But before we get started, I have a really, really exciting announcement to make. I have been dreaming about the day that I finally get to say this. And thanks to you guys and your support, today's video is sponsored. I've partnered with Casterfy and I'll talk a little bit more about them later, but I just wanted to say a sincere thank you to Casterfy and an even bigger thank you to you guys. And let's get started. Let's take a look at the thrifted dress. I found this dress at the Goodwill bins and while it is very dated, I fell in love with this gorgeous floral print. I'm also going to be using these corduroy pants that I also found at the Goodwill bins and I paid a little over $2 for both of these. My plan is to make a tiered skirt with an elasticized waist. Here are some of my inspo photos. I'm really going for a flowy, comfortable fit, so that's why I'm choosing to go with the elasticized waist. I'm going to be drawing out my game plan because some of the fabric pieces are going to be really large, and I think it's just going to be easier to explain it this way. Like I mentioned before, this is going to be a three-tiered skirt, so for my first tier, I'll cut out a rectangular piece of fabric that measures 10 and a half inches by 23 inches. I'll cut two pieces, one for the front and one for the back. The measurements for the second tier will be 10 and a half inches by 41 inches. And again, I'll cut out two pieces. For my third tier, I'll cut out a piece that measures 12 and a half inches by 64 inches. And once again, I'll cut out two pieces. These measurements are just based on the amount of fabric I could salvage from the original dress. I'll also cut out two pieces for the waistband, but I'll get to that a little later. I also decided to add pockets to the skirt, so I made a paper pattern and then cut out my fabric piece. Then I cut out a merit piece and these two pieces will make one pocket. I repeated this for my second pocket. Here is one of my pieces for the top tier of my skirt. I'm laying my pocket piece right sides facing and lining it up with the waist and side seam. I do the same for the other side. Now I'll sew these together along the side seams and you should have something that looks like this. I'll give this a good press and I also understitch the pocket to the seam allowance. This is what it should look like now and I've repeated all of these steps to make a second piece that I'm laying down right sides facing. Also around the pocket and down the side seam and I'll do the same for the other side. I'm also going to sew along the side seam here until about one inch down from the waist and repeat this on the other side. Here is what it should look like now and I'm going to sew the pockets to just the top layer of the skirt along the top here and I'll do the same for the other side. Here is what the pockets look like sewn to what is now the front of the skirt and this is what it looks like turned to the right side. Moving on to the waistband. From the corduroy pants, I cut out my front waistband that measures 16 inches by 3 inches and my back waistband that measures 19 inches by 3 inches. The total of these two measurements needs to be wide enough to fit over your hips. Now I'm placing them right sides facing and I'll sew together along the sides and you should have something that looks like this. Next step is to sew the waistband to the top tier of the skirt. I've sewn a basting stitch along the entire top of this tier. I'm placing these pieces right sides facing, making sure to line up the side seam of the waistband to the side seam of the skirt and pinning in place. Then I pull on the loose thread creating gathers and pin the skirt to the waistband making sure I spread the gathers out as evenly as I can. I'll sew this together and this is what it should look like now. I've also pressed the seam allowance up towards the waistband and here's what it looks like turned to the right side. This is the front and this is the back. Starting at the side seam, I'm folding the waistband in half and making sure it measures one inch and then pinning that in place. I continue to do this checking with my measuring tape that my waistband is even and pinning in place until I reach the other side seam. Next, I'll stitch in the ditch from about one inch to the left of this side seam all the way across until about one inch to the right of this side seam. I'll only stitch in the ditch in the back of the skirt for now because this will create a channel for me to insert my elastic. I've attached safety pins to both ends of the elastic and I'll feed it through this channel and then pin it in place. Then I'll sew the elastic to the waistband on both sides. The elastic is now sewn in and I'll repeat the same steps as before, folding the waistband under and pinning in place, making sure to check that the waistband measures at one inch all the way across. Next, I'll stitch in the ditch here, finishing the rest of the waistband. This is what the waistband should look like sewn on to the first tier and now I'll sew on the second tier. Here is my second tier that I've already sewn together creating a loop. I'm going to sew a basting stitch all the way around the top and as you can see here, I've gathered and pinned it to the first tier. Sew with a straight stitch to secure and here is what the skirt should look like now. At this point, you can hem this and have a really cute knee length skirt, but I'm going to keep going and add a third tier. Here are the pieces I've sewn together creating the third tier and I've already hemmed it by folding over twice and sewing to secure. Again, I'll sew a basting stitch all the way around the top and I'll sew it to the rest of the skirt the same way I did for the second tier, and here is the completed skirt. 
This skirt is done and I am so happy with the way it looks and while this was a relatively simple skirt to make, this took me so long because I spent so much time trying to evenly distribute all of the gathers, but it looks really good so I'm really happy. Before I move on to the top, I wanted to quickly talk about Casetify. You guys know I'm all about making more sustainable choices and they sent me a few phone cases from their Conscious collection. Everything arrived in 100% eco-friendly packaging and two of the cases are fully compostable and biodegradable. There were so many beautiful designs to choose from but I obviously had to pick this daisy print case for my daisy and they also sent me this custom engraved one as well. These are made with Ecotify which ensures that they break down without leaving any toxins behind which is so freaking cool. This case also has a 6.6 foot drop protection which is perfect for me since I film a lot of overhead shots when making my videos and I'm not the best at taking care of my phone. I also wanted to quickly say that I've been using this compostable case that I bought for myself months ago so I know this actually works and it actually protects the phone. Here is what the new case looks like on and this is the rig I have set up for my shots and I'm going to drop it onto the table like what normally would happen but since it has been tested for a 6.6 foot drop, here's what it looks like dropping from that height. Here is what the phone looks like after all of that trauma and as you can see it was pretty well protected. Casetify also sent me these two cases, and while they are not compostable, they are sustainably made from recycled materials. Both of these cases are customizable, and this one says Kuala Lumpur on it, which made me so happy because that's where I'm from, and I can never find anything that says Malaysia or Kuala Lumpur on it, so I thought this was so cool. They have such an amazing selection of colors and customization options, and these would make amazing gifts for the holiday season. Plus, Casetify has partnered with EarthDay.org to plant a tree for every compostable case sold, so make sure to check out Casetify.com slash little toe, or click the link down below to get 15% off your order, and let's get back to the tutorial. For the top, I'm going to be using a pattern that I've used before to make this dress, and I'll make sure to link that video down below. The original pattern is a free pattern from Mood Fabrics, and I'll make sure to link that below as well. I'm going to be using just the bodice part of this pattern and I will be making some minor modifications but I'll show you exactly how I do that. Here is the pattern that I had previously used. I'm going to shorten all of these pieces by 2.5 inches and then trace out my new pattern pieces. Besides the length, I left these two pieces the same but for the center front piece, I not only took some length from the bottom but also a little over an inch from the top. The original pattern was also a little bit too wide so I took off an inch there as well. With my new pattern, I cut out my fabric pieces. As you can see here, the center front was cut on fold and here are the pieces for the other side. I'm going to start by sewing these three pieces together. I'm placing them right sides facing and I'll sew together along the princess seams. Here is what the front piece should look like now. Then I place the corresponding back pieces right sides facing and I'll sew together along the shoulder seams and side seams. Here is what the top should look like turned to the right side. Using some leftover cotton fabric I had in my stash, I made a lining piece following all of those same steps. Before I sew the lining to the shell, I'm going to add these bra cup inserts. I have the lining on inside out and I've just pinned it in the back for now. Once I was happy with the placement of the cups, I pinned it in place and repeated this for the other side. Then I sewed the cups to the wrong side of the lining with a straight stitch. This is completely optional, I just personally don't like wearing bras and the top is backless so I thought this would be a good solution. To sew the lining to the shell, I place both pieces right sides facing and pin along the entire front of the top. Now I'll sew from this shoulder seam along the neckline to this shoulder seam. Don't worry about the back for now, I'll sew this together later. Here's what it looks like sewn and turned to the right side and I've also given the neckline a good press and understitched the lining to the seam allowance. Before I sew the lining to the shell in the back, I'm going to add a piece of elastic here. I'll start by making a casing for the elastic. This corduroy piece measures 15 inches by 3 inches and I'm folding it right sides facing and I'll sew all the way across. Here I have the casing turned to the right side. I've attached a safety pin to my elastic and I'm going to feed it into the channel. At this point, I'm going to sew the elastic to the casing, securing it in place. Now, I continue to feed the elastic through the casing. I'll sew this end in place as well and you should have something that looks like this. Here, I have my shell and lining right sides facing. I'm going to sew the shell and lining together but first I'm going to place the elastic piece here and pin in place so that it's sandwiched between the shell and the lining. I pin the rest of the lining to the shell and I'll sew together, securing the elastic in between the two layers. I've sewn those pieces together and once I turn the top to the right side, you should have something that looks like this with the elastic attached to this side of the top. The other side is a little trickier and this is a little hard to see but I'm pinning the elastic to the right side of the lining. Now I'm folding the shell under so that the right side of the shell will be touching the elastic and pin in place. 
Then I continue to pin the shell to the lining, making sure they are right sides facing with the elastic sandwich between them. Just like before, I'll sew this together, securing the elastic in between both layers. This part may seem a little tricky, but just trust the process and once you turn the top to the right side, you should have something that looks like this with the elastic connecting the two back pieces. I've also given this a good press and just like the front, I've understitched the lining to the seam allowance. I'm going to add a corduroy band to the bottom of the top so I measure the width of just my front pieces and for me that measurement is 15 inches. Using that measurement, I cut out this piece making sure to include seam allowance to the length and this piece is 3 inches tall. For the rest of the band, I cut two of these long strips that are the length of the original corduroy pants and 3 inches tall. I'm going to sew these pieces together making sure that the shorter piece is in the center. Here it is sewn together and now I'm going to pin it right sides facing to both layers of the top, making sure to line up the side seams and pin all the way around. I'll sew to secure and this is what the top should look like now. To finish these long ends, I'm folding them right sides facing and pinning together. Now I'll sew all the way along this long edge as well as the end here. I'll do the same for the other side and you should have something that looks like this. I might try a different way to sew this if I ever do something like this again because turning this out to the right side took way too much time. But here is what it looks like now and this band is almost done. I'm folding the band in half making sure that the raw edge is also tucked under, pinning it in place and continue to work my way across the entire top. Now you can stitch in the ditch here, but I decided to hand sew with a blind stitch instead. This is what the top should look like now and I'll tie these two ends in a bow. Last step is to add the sleeves. I'm using the original sleeves from the dress but I'll be adding this corduroy cuff. Here is the sleeve with the cuff sewn on and I made a video recently with step-by-step -step instructions on exactly how to do this and I'll link that video down below. I've also sewn a basting stitch along the sleeve cap curve. I've pinned the sleeve to both layers of my top, making sure that the sleeve seam and side seam line up. I also gathered the top of the sleeve until it matched the arm side and then pinned in place. I'll sew with a straight stitch and here is what the top looks like with the sleeve sewn on. All that's left to do is sew on the other sleeve and here is the completed top. A little reminder of what the original dress looked like and here is the final outfit. I am so happy with how this turned out and this outfit is going to be so perfect for the holidays. I love the way the corduroy looks as an accent and the extra large pockets are definitely a plus. I love the square neckline and puff sleeves but my favorite thing about this top is definitely the back. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you want to see more photos of this outfit, make sure you follow me on Instagram at Little Toe. If you liked this video, make sure to give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and let me know in the comments below what you thought about this upcycle. A quick thank you to Casterify for sponsoring this video. Make sure to check out the link below for 15% off your order and an even bigger thank you to all of you for all this amazing support. As always, thank you so much for watching.